lymphoma is a cancer of what uh, of the lymphoid cells. These are part of your immune system. Uh, they live in the lymph glands but circulate through the blood and bone marrow and really can show up anywhere in the body. And what happens is you get a mistake in the machinery of that cell and that cell turns into a, a cancer cell. And within lymphoma there are two main, there, there's Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And within non-Hodgkin lymphoma uh, we think about lymphomas of T cells and B cells and NK cells. And in the U.S., the vast majority of lymphomas are, arise from the B cell, uh, about 85%, and the T and NK uh, lymphomas are much less common, about 15% of cases. The diffuse large B cell lymphoma is the most common uh, subtype of lymphoma we see. It's also the most common non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, it is a fast-growing lymphoma, uh, and the description means when you look under the microscope, the cells are spread out across the slide in a diffuse manner, which means they just kind of uh, percolate across the entire cell. They're not in a round or nodular configuration, and they are large B cells, so it's really a descriptive title, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Uh, and it is a fast-growing lymphoma that typically progresses over months and uh, it's typically treated with combination chemotherapy uh, in conjunction with rituximab, which is a, uh, a drug that targets CD20, which is a protein on the surface of B cells. Any patient with newly diagnosed lymphoma, first of all, needs to know what their precise diagnosis is because the treatment and prognosis are completely dependent upon the subtype of lymphoma. I think it's important that patients know that. And then I think they need to know about their treatment options and how effective those treatment options are and what, what typically one would expect in terms of side effects and how to deal with those. As with any lymphoma, the biopsy is absolutely critical. Uh, so we need to get a piece of tissue to send to our pathologists who look under the microscope. They look at the individual cells and then they look at the architecture of the way the piece of tissue looks and then they do special stains that highlight proteins on and in the tumor cells. Sometimes they do some very fancy tests including what we call molecular diagnostics to look for chromosomal abnormalities or, or you know, very specialized testing. They put all that information together and they come up with a diagnosis. If you get too small a piece of tissue, you're not gonna have that architecture as much information as you need so we typically need to get a piece of lymph node. My lymphoma journey began in 2009 when I was diagnosed with primary mediastinal diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Um, I went through three different chemo regimens, none of which were successful, and ultimately had an um, experimental stem cell transplant, which saved my life. It wasn't hard for me to find information about uh, lymphoma when I was first diagnosed, but it was difficult for me to find information about people who were my age with my disease type. Um, afterwards, when I really became aware of lymphoma.org and the Lymphoma Research Foundation, I realized that there are lots of people out there who are like me, um, and I wish that I had known that early on. I would definitely recommend that patients uh, visit lymphoma.org because it uh, contains disease-specific information, and I think for many patients when they get a diagnosis of lymphoma, there's this thought that it's, it's one disease. Well, it's really more than 50 different subtypes of lymphoma, and the treatment, prognosis, everything about that disease is very dependent on what, what subtype of lymphoma a patient has. And I think going to a website like lymphoma.org where it's very carefully laid out, there's a lot of information that's digestible so patients can then look to what further information they want to get and really get a good background understanding of what the disease is and the treatment options. Thank you.